All right. Today we're going to be discussing how we charge fast with our new DC fast charger. We're going to go into the very light duty commercial charging now. That's what this video is going to be about. Since we are going a fully electrified fleet, we need to find solutions to charge fast. So this van is fully charged. So for me to do this test, I actually just turned it on and you can see it's showing 125 miles of range. So I got it running. I put on it. So what this does is takes in uh, 100 amps and it converts the 100 amps AC to DC right here. There are two 10 kilowatt modules here. You can see the lights that are on. Um, so you can make this a 10 kilowatt system. Got a 100 amp shunt trip circuit breaker. There's my inlet connector. We have our screen. It gives us our options. It's showing it's idle. My van is fully charged right now. And um, we have an emergency power off switch. So if I put that off, it goes into an emergency. If I undo it, alarm goes away and tells me it's been released. And then here's our CCS connector. CCS connector coming into the van. And I'm fully charged, so I can unplug it. And this is the CCS. So it's giving pure DC straight to the vans. So the reason we're using this is we've been dispatched during the day and it's exceeded the range of the van. So what's going on guys? It's Garrett here from EV Charger Fast. I want to show you the difference between DC fast charging and standard, standard level two charging. So right now I have my standard forward wall connector charging. Level two, it's 40 amps, so it's giving 32 amps output and it's saying it's going to charge 100% by 7.59 p.m. And right now it is 4.30. So this is what we normally do every night, but let's take a look and see what happens when we want to charge even faster. Let's see what we can do. So we've got my level two connected. This has a thousand kilowatt CP signal, thousand Hertz, which tells the truck how much Tells the wall connector how much it can charge, which is 32 amps. So if we look, I mean, we are at just under 32 amps. Perfect. Now let's take a look at what this guy can do. This is a 20 kilowatt DC fast charger. This takes, has a 100 amp breaker, as you can see, 100 amp breaker. And the level two is a 50 amp breaker. So here is a CCS connector that comes with it. Now again, you wouldn't use this on any standard car. You need to have the DC fast charger connection on it for this to work. Otherwise, you're gonna be just using the standard J1772. Let's see what happens. Okay, so here we go. We, we've got the, the DC fast charger plugged in. And let's fire it up. So it's an idle and we're gonna start it. It's communicating with the car, the truck. DC output power, I heard just go on. Reset all its parameters. And you can see that ticking up, look at that. Look at the kilowatt hours just ticking up. You can hear the fans go on. State of charge, it's at 72%. It's been not even a third of a minute. And CCS is the connection. Let's take a look on my amp probe. Let me switch my amp probe. So here we are, and you can see we are at 70 amps. 
70 amps on this. DC directly into the e-transit van. Let's go take a look and see what the reading says. Okay, so now it's saying 80% at 503 p.m. So that is very soon. It's 440. So that's about 22 minutes to get to 83%. Now I noticed that the DC charging seems to stop at 80%. I'm going to find out because when I plugged in the regular uh, charger wall connector from Ford, it said 100%, I think 8 o'clock at night. So the question is, even though this is using 2X, does this work half the amount of time? Interesting. So 70 amps. 70 amps AC at 240 volt gives me 20 kilowatts of DC fast charging. Whereas this gives me, of course it's set differently and I do have it plugged in. I think the maximum on this one is 32 amp because it does have the L, the 1450P plug. So that's the max this will do. The question is, is this thing running for so long and am I using a lot more energy with this than with this? Now, I'm gonna recommend something to you. I am an electrical contractor, so I consider myself an expert in this field. I wanna tell you that after 30 years in business, I've never seen so much power being used in people's homes. This is no joke, guys. When you go to EVs, the power that's going to be ripping through your house to charge your EVs is excessive. So whoever you hire, whether it's EVChargerFast.com or you hire your local handyman, I'm not going to criticize you. Number one, get a permit. Make sure you get an electrical permit because the inspectors are being very difficult on the jobs. They realize the power that's running through. They're no longer accepting. So I want to see, because right now, again, now it's saying I have 75% charge and 80% at 5.03 p.m., which is only 5% to go, and I'm, it's at 4.47. And again, if I connect the Ford wall connector, it'll say 100% charge at 8 p.m. I'm gonna test and see if this DC fast charger scales back or shuts off at 80%. I think that's the goal guys of EVs and fast charging they want you to charge from 0 to 80 percent or at whatever level in a maximum of 80 percent I don't think it wants to go all the way it wants to kind of trickle charge above that so let's see what happens so again it's saying right now I'm at 80 percent 2.11 kilowatt I'm here for 7.8 minutes so let's see what uh, what's happening here. Let's check my amperage. I'm still pretty seven, uh, 72 amps now I'm drawing, a little bit more. It was 69, 70. I've checked both phases too, they're both balanced. And we can charge. Now, I started to say about power and being careful. Guys, this is all you need. For anybody out there who has an EV that's not a lightning, that's not a high voltage car, this car is a, um, the, the transit is 450 volts DC. This is a 500 volts DC output. So this is a perfect compatible with this car. 
This wouldn't work as well with, say, a Lucid or with a Lightning because you would want something a little bigger, which they do make higher voltage output. You kind of want to match the voltage of your charging with what your car can accept. So this is a great match for me. Let's see what, what we got. Oh, and again, the reason I say I like these is because these are very low power draw guys. So they put very little pressure on your electrical system. Something like this can really tax your electrical system. So again, you want to make sure you get a permit, that you get it professionally installed. Because if your house burns down, insurance companies first thing is going to, they're going to know. They're going to look at these EVs. These electrical inspectors are asking for, uh, you know, four wire for 60 amp breakers. Four wire for up to 60. So they used to allow six wire for 60. Not anymore. Not anymore. You know these electrical inspectors are getting special training because they're seeing this onslaught. All right, so I'm still on target. I'm at 76%. It's 502, it's saying. And it's now 450. So we'll let it go a little bit. I'll pause the video. I don't want to bore you guys with too much, but I figure you'd be interested. We do have two Ford Transit vans. I have one over here. It's out in the field. It didn't come back from the shop yet. This is a um, a new rack that just came in, just was delivered today. But here's where the other Ford van. So we have no issues at all every night plugging in our e-transit vans. No issues at all. Plug them in and sleep well at night. I wouldn't leave this on at night. I don't know, it's just too much power and um, not in my house. Now, I also wanna mention, I did do this, set this up at a, my commercial customer, one of them, and it really took, it was 96 amps because it was a 208 volt system. As you guys know, in commercial, three phase 208 is the standard here in the United States. 120, 208, 277, 480. Um, but at home, we have 240 volt single phase. So that higher voltage is definitely helping. This is definitely not ha as hot. It's running at a cool 70 amps, which I'm more happy. Since I got 3.3 kilowatts, 76% state of charge. But if I were to plug this in, I would get one or two miles in, um, in, a, in a while. It would take a while to even just even see a mile register with those. But that's fine at night. Come in at night, you plug it in. If you guys are getting a Tesla, if you're getting a Chevy Bolt, if you're getting a car that just has a standard, if this is all you see when you buy your car, this is all you need. You do not need a 60 amp juice box. You don't need the 48 amp juice box. All you need is the 50 amp line coming down, J1772, 32 amps. It's very safe, it's less taxing. My question here is energy. Is it cheaper for me for this or this? That's what I wanna find out. Maybe this is cheaper because it's faster and more efficient. I'm gonna find that out. So stand by guys and I'll let you know. You know, another analogy is when you, when you look at this and you see this energy at uh, almost four kilowatt hours in almost 15 minutes, that's the equivalent of a hundred That's actually 100 watt light bulbs, 10 of them, burning for four hours. 
So if I had 10 100 watt light bulbs on for four hours, that's the same amount of energy. So in 15 minutes, this thing is burned the same as four, you know, 10 100 watt light bulbs for four hours and 15 minutes. So if I'm at 10 cents a kilowatt, this is costing me 42 cents so far for this. So 42 cents I've spent in 15 minutes on the energy. And I'm up to 77. Let's take a look again in the van. You always can tell you're in an electrician's house, right? Because you see stuff like this laying on the ground. Because the guys are too lazy to like pick it up. A lot of this wire is good. Look at it. They cut off stuff and they leave it there. Oh well. Alright, here, where are we at now? I'm at 78% and it says fast charging. You see it? And 80% and 503. And it is now 456 money on it stand by all right what do I got now 4.92 in almost 18 minutes 78 percent I want to see when that gets to 80 does this thing shut down that's my well, that's what I want to see what do we got now Ooh, I'm at 79% fast charging. And it's now it's down to 459, it's saying. So in one minute, in one minute, we might as well wait here. You guys can wait with me for a minute. I appreciate you watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Fast.com. We are licensed electrical contractors in New Jersey and in Florida, and we can install this for you. So basically, I just want to see what happens when this hits 80%. Yeah, 79%. Let's check our current. Timed off on me. Let me reset it. 73 amps. It's pulling 73 amps. Where this pulls 31 amps, 32 amps. Let's see what happens. How long will it take to get to 80%? It's been 20 minutes. Now, when I came in at the end of the day here, because it is almost five o'clock, I had 71 miles of range and now I have 92. So in I'm at 80%. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. So I got 21 miles of range in 20 minutes. It's about a mile a minute. Or I believe these are Oof, a lot less. Let me do that next. Now this says 79% still. But the van says 80%. Let's see what happens. I hear the fans full force. We got a 100 amp shunt trip breaker. And we have two... 10 kilowatt modules here. 
So this cover comes off, these modules pull right out. So if you can't, if you can't have 70 amps available, you can use this at 35 amps. Oh, it just turned to 80%. Let's see what happens now. Oh, it's still going. 72 amps. It's not cutting off at all. Let's see if the car says something else now. Maybe the car says now full charged at a certain time. Let's see what it says now. Yeah, okay. So it'll get to 100% at 7 o'clock now. These fast charging. So that's two hours. So yeah, it will taper down. Because we did... We did 10% in 22 minutes. So in 22 and two hours, that means it's got to start restricting it. And I'm wondering if the, the van will give a signal. It starts changing that CP signal, that modulated wave to slowly ask for less of a charge. See what's happening here? Nope, we still going full swing, man. We're still going full swing. So we gotta be careful. Maybe this does not have the technology to slow down the charge, and this could potentially damage the batteries. If you're just throwing in all this power. Let's see again, let's take a look and see what we got here. No, it's still saying two hours to go 100%. But now I'm at 94 miles. So I went from 71 miles of range to 94 miles of range. And 24 minutes. And keep in mind, we'll end this video. All right, so I've had 100 watt light bulbs, 10 of them running for seven hours. Same amount of energy in 25 minutes. Let's take a look at my amp probe. 73 okay well you know what that's enough let me hit stop this charging is complete I hear it shut down so I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna connect the Ford, the Ford, and so now you can see this little flap. So again, if you don't have this flap and these two pins, you watch this video for nothing because you can't use it. But most vehicles now are coming with that. Let's take a look now and see what's happening. So we're charging again. Let's see now how long it'll take to charge. Interesting. It's 100%, now it says charging, no longer fast charging, but it's saying 7.30 as opposed to 7 o'clock. So, I don't know. Uh, something's a little askew there, but maybe because... Um, it's going to start to trickle charge. Let's take, see how much it's pulling. Yep, still pulling 31 amps. That's this guy right here. 
31 amps. And again, the reason why this is pulling 31 amps is because this connector, in fact, I'm gonna show you that right now. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you how to test this too. Okay, when I'm, so as soon as I hit that button, it stopped. So this is the PP uh, plug pilot control. When I push this button, it'll stop charging. Watch that blue light when I hit this button. Okay, I can hear it. The light didn't do anything, but it, the power certainly went off. So in order for you to pull this out, you need to press this button. And that instantly releases the contact inside there so that there's zero voltage or potential here. Now, let's go test this. The, uh, there's a dial here. This is the main dial. A equals no car is attached. B represents that the plug pilot is pushed in. So that is tested by these leads up at the top. So now you need to do the full test. You need an 87 or an oscilloscope or a scope meter by fluke. So that cheap Amazon one I was using before over here was just to do an amp pro reading. You cannot use a meter like that. You need to get a really professional meter. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in. Um, I should have banana, but you don't need the banana. You can use regular leads. You can use these leads, no problem. You stick them into the top. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select B. Now if you notice, B is on either side. So if I select B and I look at my voltage, I've got 10 volts. That's what's supposed to happen. Now if I go to C, which is a non-vented, meaning fan, there's no fan in the charger. Now, this charger has a fan, but this charger cannot be tested with this. You cannot test DC fast charging with this FEV100. This is only for the residential, the level two chargers. You can't test the lightning with this. Um, anything that has the CCS plug will not fit. And even if you see that little tab right there between the J1772 and the two uh, DC ports, you can't fit it in. So this tab here is there to prevent you from connecting and doing some damage. All right, so now we want to do, I'm going to do two, uh, a, a test that I normally do at the very end, but since I'm already plugged into the PP and the CP output, there it is, the CP output signal, I'm going to um, initialize a charge in a non-vented, because this is non-vented, it's just a passive device, and by me selecting it to C, okay, now I heard the contactor went off. So that means voltage is present. And that's why that light went on. That light went on because now th the charger thinks it's connected. All right? We're fooling it with this device. That's why you need this. And the reason this is so important is we want to now check the frequency of that output. The frequency is a direct correlation to the amperage that the wall connector will allow to pass through. Okay? So in other words, the car is, look, is going to read the frequency of your wall connector. And it wall connector should read 1,000 hertz. 1 kilohertz. I'm, oh, I just memorized that. It's an easy number to memorize. So making sure my leads are plugged in. Okay, and if I go over to my voltmeter and I select Hertz, this is why you need an 87. This should read, after pressing this, 1,000. And it's off a little bit. Maybe my leads are... So it's, it's showing me 1,014. I haven't seen that before. It's showing 1,014. It should be one, like the juice boxes, 
the all tells, those are 1,000 solid number. So uh, like this is a raw video. I didn't do any kind of test or anything or set it up to, to make it look better. This is raw stuff, guys. But anyway, I think that's okay. So it's 1,014 hertz. And what that means is that tells this truck how much power to draw from. It tells it to, because nothing limits this guy, right? Nothing but the circuit breaker limits. Why wouldn't, say, the full 50 amp breaker flow through and come through the wall connector? I mean, what's here? There's nothing here limiting it. No, this has got a frequency generator that communicates with the car and it tells the car, hey, this is what I am and this is what's available. Don't ask me for any more because I can't give it to you. And that's how it knows how much. That's why you don't trip a 50 amp breaker on this because of that thousand watt signal, that thousand hertz signal. That's why it's so important. So now I'm going to go back. I can, I could hear it click when you do that. I'm going to be real quiet guys and see if you can. Right? You hear that? So when I'm simulating that the car is, it's plugged in. That's the first signal it looks for. So it knows the connector is present. And then when I hit charge, it allows for the power to go through, which is here. So if I go back to B, that light should go off. A, on. Now, you wanna also test your voltage. You wanna make sure your voltage coming out, and that's what you do here. So we can remove these leads. I'm gonna reset my meter back to AC, get out of the frequency. And again, you guys probably don't have this meter you need to get it. Um, I have my, you need to get it, 244 volts. And you know what? My higher voltage is actually a good thing, I think, because maybe that's why this guy only took 70. And when I was at a commercial customer, this guy was pulling 96 and 208 volts. So that higher voltage is actually good. And then we can check the ground, right? 122 to ground, and then we can do the other phase. Okay, so we're good with that. So now we can put this back to get, say that there's no car. We'll close these plugs up. My phone was ringing. And now the very first thing you do when you connect your, your wall connector to the FEV, to the Fluke FEV 100, if this light is on, stop. Okay, basically, and, and chances are it won't Connected be on too. Because if that light is on, that means one of the, the ground is actually energized, whether they miswired it or mislabeled it, but that's the first test. So if that's on, you stop right away and you figure out the problem. The second one is to actually get ground the system, give a path for some current to run through by using your finger and touching this small contact point which allows your body to ground out a small signal and it, that light goes on, you have a problem. But you can see nothing. Now I'm plugged in, everything is on, and it, there's no problem. So that's your first tests, all right? Then you would go back into the PP power uh, plug present, right? Then you act like there is a, um, you know, the car is connected, act like it wants to charge, okay? And then the next thing you want to do, actually, no, while that's on, we want to do a GFCI test. So, GFCI test. Let's talk about that. The manufacturer recommends you do not put on any wall connector or charger on a GFCI breaker. You do not do it. However, the National Electric Code is not in your favor. The 2020 National Electric Code adopted a rule that says all 125, 250 volt receptacles, regardless of size, must be on a GFCI breaker. So because this is plugged in, okay, because this is plugged in, 
this has to be on a GFCI, which is counterintuitive because this has built-in GFCI in it. This has GFCI built into it, and it's hardwired. Does not require a GFCI breaker. That's why this is a standard breaker, because this has it built in. Had this device been hardwired, no GFI. So we're going to do a test, and that test should trip off the GFI in the wall connector and my GFI. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to hit GFCI test while I'm on. You've got to be on while you do that. So if I hit the test button, let me see if I can turn while I do it. Okay, you guys heard that. I hit the button and I'm off. Now, I've tripped my GFI, which is exactly what I wanted to do. There is no way you can do this test without that piece of equipment. So now I'm going to reset it off and then back on. And now that gave me a fault but it reset itself. That turned bright red on the end and reset itself. So normally if you do this test and you do not have a GFCI breaker, this will just fault out and then it will reset itself. Okay, so that's that. Now, the second one is a ground error. We're going to represent uh, a fault to ground. Three, two, one, and I heard it go off. Now, if you notice, and I released the button, the GFCI didn't trip off, but this went off and it resets itself. Okay, so that's working. The last test that we're going to do is a CP error. And this I'm gonna to have to hold my phone, put my phone down and do it because I'm gonna press and hold this button while I turn this back and forth and that's going to put this into an error. And then that should, uh, I don't know if that's going to make any kind of noise, but that will go into an error and it shouldn't reset immediately. It should take a little bit to reset because this error is when the, the frequency gets messed up and that main communication between your wall connector and your charger, this is a critical, control critical pilot error. button. And I'm going to rotate this knob like it's saying from C to D, okay? Three, two, one, push. Okay. Boom, there it is. That's exactly what I was looking for. And guys, I haven't done, I've done this test on my own unit yet. This is the first time I'm doing it. So not pre-planned, it's not pre-programmed, it's not but it's showing that this is functional. That's what it's supposed to do. So that if there is miscommunication from here and your car, you don't just blow everything up and have, uh, you know, have unlimited power come through to trip your circuit breaker. So this is real important. Now, this should reset on its own. I want to see if it does that. Let's give it a minute and see if this resets. If not, we'll have to unplug it and plug it back in. But I believe on the juice box... Uh, it resets and it just did it's resetting now and there it goes now it's back to the charging mode because I have it in charge see it's charging so let me turn it off